No, I, yeah, we should be good. All right. Cool. So, did you want to do you want to introduce our guest? Yeah, I guess I, I should introduce our guest. We've got a guest today on Size 10. He's a super funny comedian who wears shoes most days. Yes. Um, his name is Tommy Ryman. Give it up. Yeah. Yay. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so. Oh, we also just so that you don't get scared, we have we do have a producer, David Kildall. He's on. Oh, the, there's David's hand. Yeah, yeah, that was his hand. Uh, and then he he also has like some sound bites, so don't be afraid if um if, if there's yeah. like a slide whistle all of a sudden. Well, yeah, we don't, oh, we don't have the slide <laughs> we whistle. We should on get there. a slide whistle. <laughs> we That's just a have good idea. the air horn right now and, and like a guitar riff. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, we're like real radio DJs at this point. Totally. Yeah uh awesome so tommy uh we yeah we just kind of hang out and chat and it's uh it's rad it's also just rad to see you man uh i know this is exciting <laughs> it's it's awesome david can you turn his channel up just a touch for me perfect i'll just keep i mean i can't hear because he's not it's okay we're good all right uh so tommy what shoes um what shoes are you bringing for us today what I brought are the exclusive uh, Lego Adidas uh, shoe. So they were they were put out by Adidas, and they were licensed by Lego. So they have, and uh, I think they came out uh, this spring or la last spring. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was like last date. fall, maybe. <laughs> Some, and I signed up for the, sometime last year. <laughs> yeah, I signed up for the raffle, didn't get them, and then so I, these are from eBay, but oh, they nice. got the multiple laces so, and then they do have a new like regular shoes at adidas that you can get that are lego but they're just for kids so these were the only one oh the those are the only adult ones made for adult yeah okay yeah we so. were just talking about that before the podcast we were talking about how adidas was putting out more lego shoes but we didn't really know much about them so that's that's what it is is they're putting out more but they're only in kid sizes yeah, for some reason, apparently, they think just children will wear those, which is crazy. But. Right. I know. I was looking for adult king-size um, Mario Brothers sheets for my bed. <laughs> they were a little harder to get than I realized. Like, they mostly only make them for twin size. <laughs> You're like, they're like, you mean bunk bed? You're like, no, King California King. Yeah, like, they don't... <laughs> Like, come on. It's for my kid who who has a huge bed. <laughs> yeah. He's like a rich kid, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh so why did you why did you pick those sneakers? What what caught your eye on them? See, I I um unfortunately I'm not I mean I have I don't uh, have many sneakers. Mm -hmm. Like I, I wore Converse, but this so this was kind of my first delve into the rare sneakers or ones that like you know are hard to find mm -hmm. uh but yeah i'm a huge lego fan because i build lots of legos and so that's why they spoke to me that's awesome personally. Now, well, aren't there lego sets that are kind of like sneakers and that they're limited and they're hard to find and they're really sought after i'm yeah, not I mean, really into lego but i've heard that there are some that people are like there are like certain sets that are really valuable and stuff yeah that's what lego i mean lego retires sets just like shoes get retired so then it's instantly goes up in value what you have like ha i i buy a lot of star wars legos are real valuable and okay and then uh like i sold some and you can basically sell them for at least what you paid for them or you'll make profit even if you've like built them and stuff so it's, oh, kinda, really? it's not like when we were when we were kids with just a little yellow minifigure and like a plane like mm -hmm. now they're all licensed and pretty rad so they're all limited edition yeah what's There's the a, most what would be like the most valuable set that you have um, I mean, I have some that like doubled in value or or tripled that are like random, like the Imperial Shuttle. Uh, but there was a Lego Ultimate Collector's Millennium Falcon that retailed at three ninety nine when it first came out, or two ninety nine, and it went up to like five thousand dollars was like the average oh, for wow. unopened box. What? Yeah, but then they re released it, but that the original one still has its value. But that's the most I've ever paid for a set was the new Millennium Falcon that was released. And I went to Burbank and got in line. Cause, and they, there was like four dudes waiting. And they're like, you're the last one. There's Because like they, that store only had five sets. Oh, so wow. I was pretty stoked. Yeah. And then I was standing there for a while. And so there was a Lego staff guy that was like, all right, you guys are the ones. Like, 
but kind of I mean, make sure you stick around here. And then one guy showed up and he had like a cup of coffee and his chair because he got there, you know, he was ready to wait. And then they're like, no, man, they're all spoken for. And <laughs> the look, the look of sadness on that man's face was it'll forever haunt me when that 45 like, year old man uh, found out he wasn't going to get a Lego Millennium Falcon that day. <laughs> oh, what a bummer. Yeah, <laughs> that is it. That sounds like pretty much the same as sneakers. I mean, it's kind of a bunch of grown men or <laughs> comics, too, because like you, you, you do comics as well, right? Yeah, I'll collect comics and you kind of know which what's going to be released when and try to get on it. Hmm. Do you go do you uh, have you ever like camped out or anything for a comic? Not for that. You don't necessarily have to because you can just ask your shop to hold it for you, you oh, know that's like cool. you just be like you just know it's published so uh not not so much yeah not, do you have to have it in at that comic book shop like you do you have to does that have to be one of your boys or no will they do that for anybody they'll just do it for anybody as long as you give them notice but you the, the comic people will kind of know what's going to be hot so if you're like hey do you think this will sell out they're like no you better pull it like it'll probably be gone oh okay cool but but rarely do comics skyrocket anymore because they're mm. so they're all digital and it's <laughs> they're all movies now they're all <laughs> yeah wandavision tv after the series fact. <laughs> <laughs> but do you so you guys i mean sneakers because like for the adidas one you had to like join the raffle because you couldn't even i don't know if they were selling them in stores at all because it was all during COVID as well so yeah no that was i i remember when that one dropped i didn't go for it i'm, I'm like not a big lego person so i kind of just left it for people who are no i get it you hate my shoes it's <laughs> no fine. i think they're cool I, I, I do think they're cool but they're not for me but i do right I, I remember that was a raffle and there's a lot of shoes that are raffle like yeah. that's pretty much how you get them it kind of was already how you got them before covid but now with covid like pretty much nobody camps out for shoes anymore yeah it's all just apps and and just not getting them because somebody has a bot that eats them all up right yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's a it's a whole different game but so how much how much did you pay for those if you don't mind us asking uh not too much over retail i think i had to pay an extra 60 bucks basically oh, to get them after bad. yeah because there there was a bunch of people grabbing them like bidding and then one came up but you have to also look for your size too yeah. so i was waiting for what do I wear? A size fourteen? I forget how big giant my feet are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh damn! <laughs> yeah, then it must have been real hard to get because those fringe sizes. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I found my gentleman's nine, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, uh, it, the, I just like made an offer. So. Oh, there. I don't think I've but. ever bought shoes on eBay. Really? Oh yeah, the couple times I've bought, like resold shoes it was always off stock x oh, okay see are, are more you... at a local shop what's up? i should have asked people about that because i know about like where to get legos not on ebay like mm -hmm. for, from collectors or whatever yeah. but for that i just wanted them so bad and i didn't get the right and i just knew i was like well they'll probably be up on ebay but ebay's a little weird. risky it's they they just started doing what's called authentication so like with a hype shoe there's a lot of fakes and yeah. uh, you want to make sure that you're if you're paying a lot for them, you want to make sure that they're legit. And um, now eBay offers uh, like a version of authentication for sneakers specifically because it's becoming such a thing. Now, with Got those, it. the shoes that you bought, I don't think fakes is that big of a concern. It's usually yeah. on shoes that have like a crazy margin, like like those Supreme Dunks that dropped the other day that sold for one hundred and ten and resell for a thousand. Like those wow. kind of shoes, there's so much money in making a good fake that there's going to be fakes out there. But in those, and a lot of the shoes that we have, it's like they're not really going to yeah. make a fake of it to make forty bucks. Right? Like they don't. Have either of you? No, you haven't bought a fake ever, have you? Not that I, I know it on of. Purpose. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> You're like these I, are real. I suppose oh. I could own some fakes if they made it through the check. But as far as I know, I have nothing but nothing the box but. Box just says like. Necky, you're like any key. What? <laughs> Necky. Oh man. Oh, the swoosh is sideways. Yeah, yeah, I feel like those would probably get flagged. Yeah. If they like... spell if they spell Nike wrong, that that's usually an indication. Dead giveaway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The. But it's down to like crazy stuff on looking for fakes. 
like they they'll take like the insole out and be counting the number of dots like it's to that level because the fakes have gotten really good it's a whole the whole business but yeah i mean like so yeah if you ever do go for it, hit me up if you ever are like hey i really want this pair of sneakers um and i'll i mean it's i'll give you some resources or whatever we usually just i i find StockX to be pretty reliable uh you can go down a rabbit hole of like how reliable it is like some people think it's not but for something unless you're getting unless for you're what going we're for, like, buying it doesn't matter if you're <laughs> spending a thousand bucks you just have a better chance of somebody having tried to fake that shoe because it's yeah. more profitable but so tommy you said this is your first like real foray into hyped shoes did yeah it, did I it really, make I you really want have... to get more hyped shoes i mean yeah i i've <laughs> I've seen that world, but I already collect so many other stuff. I'm like, I can't do another thing. Like, <laughs> you gotta, yeah, I got to, like, stop Legos, then go into sneaker, just budget-wise. Yeah. yeah. But it is cool, and it is definitely, like, a world that I could get into. Like, and, like, just – and I I watch, like, YouTube videos of some people, like, just, like, sneaker videos, and that gets you more excited, too. Oh, it gets so. you hyped. Yeah, but, it's, it's a fun – the reason – part of the reason I got into it is because I, like – like for stage stuff also we live in portland oregon so it's like just in the in the water or something <laughs> I, feel, right. I feel like but it a lot of the a lot of the other comedians and stuff are always wearing like cool sneakers and i just slowly got into it that way where it was like i want to have cool sneakers because i'm on stage with lights and <laughs> you know yeah this is a good look and then it just what are you wearing it? now these Which one? uh these are Jordan ones. Um these are the mids in the black cone colorway is what these are. Whoa, nice. Yeah. They're supposed to look like a traffic cone colors. So Yeah. Uh I like orange. It's like my favorite color. So I was I really wanted these, so I was excited about them. Yeah, and I, I agree that those are a cool shoe. They just did a good job of picking like the right colors and putting them in the right spot on that shoe. I think it's a cool one. And then these are a New Balance 997S nice. in whatever, lots of colors. I forget what they call it, the colorway. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't. Know. I just want to get famous enough at comedy so I can design my own shoe. I don't know any comedians that have their own shoe. Like, I feel like Carrot Top should have his. Yeah. I feel like a theme comedian. I think but Kevin, I think... Hart, Kevin Hart has an, a line with Nike. He has, just oh, like, okay. running shoes or something because he's into fitness. Who nice. else? I know Bert had... Bert Kreischer, Bert Kreischer had a, got a custom, custom one, and uh, I don't know if you count him as a comedian, but uh, uh, Brendan Schaub had a custom sneaker a specifically got a for, custom his pair special. for his special with his kid's <laughs> name on it or something. Oh, he's that's rad. Into, he's big into sneakers, that dude. Uh, but when they when you have a custom, that can I can, can people get that custom that he designed, or is it just a shoe he designed and then they made it? I think it's I it's think a he shoe got surgeon. it made. Yeah, he one. got it made custom for him by like a shoe customizer that's really famous. And those shoe surgeon shoes are expensive, aren't they? Like yeah. a few thousand bucks. Basically, you just go to this guy. It's in L.A. Uh, it's called the Shoe Surgeon. It's hard to say actually. Yeah. And he's like pretty famous for making sh like just wild. Like you just go and you're just like, I want that snakeskin leather and I want that purple insole and whatever and you just pick it out and then he makes it. He does it. use like an existing design. Yeah. Like usually... it was a Jordan 1 high that Brendan got. So it looked a lot like looked these like but like you know he picked different colors for everything and I think he had his kid's name on it and they were wacky looking. And if so. you if you go down there's a rabbit hole of a uh, thing I recently found you can get custom painted shoes which is sort of like the poor man's version of doing stuff so they, they just get an all white shoe and then they paint it however you want him to paint it or you could paint it yourself yeah there's a dude named kick casso kick casso yeah kick casso <laughs> another fun one he's a say. fun follow on instagram he, every now and then he does some pretty cool painted sneakers or get him to tape some legos to it like hey can you like put these lego heads on here <laughs> and like yes. in the laces <laughs> Mini figures with that guy's kid's name on my shoes too. Like, why do you want somebody else's kid? Like, I don't know. He did it. It's cool. <laughs> like, also, but he's just kids. like, yeah. I just want Brendan Schaub's kid's name. <laughs> yeah, just write Tiger on all of my shoes. Yeah. His kid's is name weird? is Tiger. Come on. 
I thought you were a surgeon. <laughs> Do what I said. What What does your hat say? I can't quite read it. Is it? Oh, it's Scum and Villainy. This was my favorite bar in L.A. Uh, oh. That was designed to look like the cantina in Star Wars. Oh, cool. And, like, Kevin Kevin Smith uh, taped his podcast there uh, monthly, so Megan and I would go up there a lot because it would be, like, 20 people watching him live, his uh, uh, Fat Man Beyond podcast. Oh, very cool. cool. And uh, you used to be able to bring merch, you know, because Kevin's all about signing stuff. So you'd set it on the table, the bar, and he would sign it through the podcast. And one time we were going, and Megan was like, you should bring your album. And then he would, like, he would, you know, read it or listen to it and then put you in his movies. And that's how Hollywood works. And uh, <laughs> now I have now I have a signed copy of my album by Kevin Smith. Nice. I, <laughs> I, love I, didn't, that. I, didn't, I didn't write, like, for Kevin. I just put it up there. So he was like, yep, I'll just sign everything and throw it back. I'm like, ah, oh, this was, oh, okay. That's how <laughs> It's going to yeah, be a collector's item, <laughs> for sure. That is a limited edition product now. It is the one and only that exists. I will yeah. sell it to either of you. Uh, well, I'll trade them for either of those shoes that you have. That's, for either of the like shoes. Tra- yeah. <laughs> You're like, pass. pass. <laughs> no, I'm good. I have the album. <laughs> I can just put <laughs> Kevin on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, he like signed the jewel case too, like the top. So it's not even like you could like just put that on any other album, technically. Oh, that makes it more versatile. It is. I yeah, might it have really to is. think about like, it. Pick your favorite really album that, that or old '90s CD that you want signed by Kevin Smith. <laughs> yeah, I still have some CDs. I love that he just signed it. Like he just didn't even. He just like, all right. It probably wasn't like, even the weirdest thing he real, signed. Like, he's like, I feel like I have nothing to do with this item that's in front of me, but <laughs> but people put like anything down there for him. You know, I had like his graphic novel signed, his movies. Oh, cool. It was weird when I laid my wife Megan up there for one of the shows. <laughs> like, sign her boobs. Sign her, <laughs> sign her forehead, please. Yeah, you put a dotted line. <laughs> be like, this is where I want you to sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little X. Is this ma'am? Oh, man, I should do that. If they ever do that, I'm definitely going to lay down on the counter. <laughs> Maybe a couple little boxes for initials, too, and then, then a big line for the signature. Yeah. Have Do you ever sign autographs? For Me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I have signed uh, stuff for people. That's, do, how do you feel about that? Are you into it? Is it like? Yeah, I love it. It's uh, I mean, it's usually after shows if they buy right. a CD. The first time I signed, I was working my my home club, and it was Mitch Hedberg had passed away. So after that week, I went to the Mitch Hedberg tribute, and it was like Swartzen, uh, Pat Oswald, uh, Berbigula was there. It was a whole bunch of people on the show, and then they all kind of went to this bar after the show, and I was in there and somebody that was at the after bar looking for those guys also saw me and had seen me at the club earlier so they're like will you sign my program and i was like but i wasn't on this show i was like you want me to ruin this tribute program <laughs> with my name i mean i will but so that was kind of weird that's pretty cool though yeah someone out so. there has a program that was signed by all those guys and also you and then a rant yeah that's pretty the, cool yeah yeah that's i was gonna ask what's the weirdest thing you've ever signed would that be the weirdest yeah, probably. Probably, I don't. Unfortunately, I'm not that so wild that I don't get. You know, it's mostly just my posters or album or like a piece of paper and random stuff. Yeah, that's still really cool though. That I, is cool. Nobody's like my dad's sound. ashes. Sign the urn. <laughs> sign this urn. Full Your back favorite. tattoo. <laughs> sign my back. Ah. You made me laugh so hard I forgot I was sad. <laughs> sign all these Kevin Smith DVDs. <laughs> 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 Turn the table. There you go, comes full circle. I love it. Yeah. So have you been doing some stand up with the with the pandemic? Yeah, like some it outdoor really shows and down. Stuff? I was doing virtual shows. I I've done some some live <laughs> some live uh like socially distanced shows. Okay. Uh so it's starting to pick up and yeah. but uh I just want to make sure everything's kind of getting better and that they've got all the protocols and stuff. Yeah, we've been like, I mean, I, I I just do open mics. I'm pretty new to comedy, but like we've been back to doing outdoor mics yep. the last couple months. We still haven't taken the plunge and done an indoor show. I was supposed to on yeah, Monday. Yeah, you were booked on one on Monday, and then your dog. But Bucket ate half of a Cliff Bar, and it had chocolate in it, and I got real nervous 
about the oh. poor little dude. Cause no, he's, bucket. I know. <laughs> I was like, buddy, I have a show tonight. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no, so he ate that, and then I, like, called the dog poison control, and they were like, it's going to be uh, a wait. Also, um, have your credit card ready because it's $80 a minute or something crazy like that. And I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to, like, Google some things first before I <laughs> throw down on this. And um, – I tried to give him um, hydrogen peroxide or whatever yeah, to, to get him, him to throw, throw up. up, and he never threw up. So he and he's fine. He was totally fine. Spoiler alert: he's okay. <laughs> well, that seems like such a small amount. Yeah. So it was. I like, just assumed, like eating a Cliff Bar, he would have been like, "Let's go rock climbing." Yeah, like, he was like, just... "No, he was." And I was like, "No, <laughs> we're gonna like be mellow, and I want you to throw up." So we were like sitting on the porch where it was like, because. A dog, you can't explain, like, hey, buddy, I need you to throw up, like, not on the carpet because I want the deposit or carpet again. <laughs> you know? They don't get it. So we're, like, out hanging out on the porch, and it's getting cold, and he's like, why are we out here? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, he's uh, like, tonight is weird. Like, this is – why are you why are you so attentive right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> but uh, – so I did not do the show, but it was going to be an indoor show. It's like a big warehouse, though, and they do socially distanced like tables every ten feet. Or yeah, it's like it's like set up to have like an audience of three or four hundred in there, but they're limiting it to fifty. Yeah, and I doubt yeah. that fifty are actually showing up. But no, because the one yeah, I did one and everyone had their masks on the whole time. So I don't know. I feel like it's safe, but I'm I have a college, and then there's like a streaming option, so mm-hmm. it'll be a socially distanced live. Then you can stream it i guess and then eventually but so you're like recording a special kind of (laughs) yep exactly (laughs) another special (laughs) thankfully they only let it be available for like three days so no matter what happens to the show i don't have like a random full show just online forever all of a sudden oh yeah like oh no (laughs) just put it on youtube like i gotta write new jokes have you found you've had to adjust your act much no, I was I just like the few shows. It's just like before the pandemic, I would be performing, you know, like every weekend. Like I hadn't I hadn't except for like going on vacation. Like it was every, you know, the longest stretch I'd go without performing was like three days. Yeah. So it was just weird because things just slowed down. So it'd be like four weeks and then I'd run my set on a virtual thing and then do an outdoor show. Like everything just got spread out. So mm-hmm. you just felt rusty. And then the way I write, I like to hit up open mics because I'll have premises and then just want to riff on it. So that got harder, too. But but I, it's getting better. And I I got a bunch of ideas and stuff now. So I'm getting more excited about it. But it definitely slowed down. And I was like, maybe I'm not going to do this. But I was like, I don't know what else to do. Right. So it's super weird. Yeah. So back to the shoes. <laughs> Are these a pair that you're going to wear on stage? I think on Adidas. stage, I haven't worn them anywhere else because Minnesota's the worst too. It's like muddy one day. Like they're really hard to like. Yeah, it's hard to uh, keep shoes clean in the mud. Yeah. Like, but I for sure will have them on my feet probably in, at a show or something. Nice. And uh, at the Lego store. See oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Count. You got to go down there and let them know what's They'll up. They'll be like, that dude's so cool. Well, I'm like, yep, yep, I am. They're like, oh, <laughs> you need a discount. <laughs> <laughs> Do you work here? I wish. (laughs) Do you work here? I can help you. (laughs) I can probably answer your question. I know more than people to do. It's like an Apple store, uh, but for Legos. I love it. I've totally forgot about the Lego store in the Mall of America. Oh, is there a Lego store there? Yeah. Cool. It's it's kind of it's it's got like big. Are those even real Lego things there? Are those actually made of Legos or? Do you know? Yeah, they're they're built like out of house, and then they ship them in. Like they're all glued together, but those are individual. All their statues and stuff are giant, are put together by like individual Legos. That's cool. There might be like a big metal pipe in the middle of it for, <laughs> yeah, like, for so structural <laughs> safety. For safety reasons. Yeah. That's fun. Uh, cat. Yeah, I haven't been in Lego uh, Lego uh, World or whatever it's called, <laughs> all of America Legos. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever been to a Lego Are you store. a Legos guy at all growing you up? You know what? Not really. Like, I had, when I was a little kid, like, you know, like 10 years old or whatever, I I had a bunch of Bionicles when those oh. first came out. 
I think I was in like second grade. And those are like I was the action all figures? about those. Sort of, yeah. You build like a little Lego dude and he's got a little sword or something. Some of them would shoot a disc. They were nifty. And I had a bunch of them. Sounds um, rad. Yeah. Did you ever have bi- Bionicles or is that kind of... Uh, did you miss that one? I missed that I, one. Yeah, I didn't collect those, but... Yeah, I think you guys are both... You guys are both <laughs> about the same age, and that age is a few years older than me. So it might have... Like, when those dropped, you might have been already in, like, middle to high school. Yeah. And been like, that's for children. That's for kids. And and you were right. But I was a little <laughs> tiny child, so I was super excited about it. I had a Full monorail. Full disclosure, I'm 75 years old. Oh, you had the monorail? I had the space Whoa. monorail. That was a Lucky. that was a Christmas birthday present combi- combination present. Uh, my biggest memory of that is I remember on Christmas morning putting it together, like just frant like so excited. I like ran it across the course once, and then I took it apart and put it back into all of the slots where it went, and then the next day I put it back together again. <laughs> like that, I was just like I just liked putting them together. I didn't really ever play with them. I just liked the, the the construction part, and then I kind of just moved on, um, to the next thing. Or I would try to do a, my own version of, like change it and do it my own way, or whatever. Do you remember your first Lego set? What it was? Uh, uh, well, one was like a little plane. I think that when I was a little kid, the first like one I was stoked about. I got the Lego pirate ship. I remember like one Christmas, I was like, yes, <laughs> like the, so. But I, I, my mom would always help building them, too, because I had, like, super ADD. So she would end up building for me, and then I would play. And, like, I would make little sleeping bags for the minifigures out of paper towels. I'd tape them together. So I made <laughs> ac- accessories. That's, well, awesome. that's so responsible of you to give them a place, a comfortable bed to sleep in. You know, you don't want Very them getting thoughtful. cold. or. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I really cared about my minifigures. <laughs> I think my first one was, like, that I can remember, I don't remember, it had a big B on it, which I thought was cool, because my first name starts with a B, and it was like this spaceship, and it had like these two green like ball things on the sides that the characters could like sit in to drive it, and then the middle like lifted up, and there were two little cars that drove out of it. I don't remember Whoa. what it was called, but it was pretty, pretty extensive, and that was, that was like my main Lego. Yeah, <laughs> I should try time. to find that. If you had that monorail set, that's valuable now. Is it really? My yeah. mom might still have it, honestly. Oh, um, sick, dude. I think it might be, though, like one of those. She took all my Lego sets and just put them into the biggest Lego box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so it's just uh, it's just like a free-for-all. It's a hodgepodge of pieces. Yeah, kind of like a garbage dump of just pure <laughs> Lego pieces. Um, that sounds amazing. It does. It's just like a dream. I think that's how my Bionicles ended up. Because I think I had, by the end of it, I think I ended up with like probably 20 of them at least. Like a whole gang of those guys. And yeah. I think they yeah. all ended up just in a parts bin. That's awesome. Yeah. Even if you didn't want to like part them out, you could just... A lot, people sell bags of Legos like online for mm-hmm. just like... You'd be like, this many parts. And then they'll see in the bag, like, oh, it's got a monorail piece. And they might pay more. So. Oh really? Oh, I didn't. Yeah. See, I didn't even know. I didn't even think about that. I know my mom, uh, gave me my magic cards. Like she found all my magic cards. I don't know if that was like a thing you did. I, uh, or I collected them for a little while as a kid, and then wasn't into it. I just ended up giving them all to Corey Adam one day because I, I went through. I was like online checking to see how much each one was worth, and they were worth like like quarters and i was just like i don't have time i don't care about this (laughs) i was like let's give them to i'm gonna give them to a good home so i just went over and brought this huge box of random magic cards to Corey. (laughs) excellent yeah he was into it so um how david did you want to look up on StockX what those shoes are worth now we'll uh or like show it to yeah let's we can do like a screen share and then you can see we're looking up your sneakers and that's bucket <laughs> all right so there's the shoes uh, what did so what did you you paid how much for them right around 160 or 180 i think after shipping and everything and what, what i know size it was under 200 did you say they're size nine yeah shoes? oh they're they're okay so they're right around what you paid that's awesome 
They, nice. Yeah, they have they've stayed pretty constant. Uh, it it that this is the website that we get a lot of our sneakers off of. And yeah, if we if we have to pay resell, like if we desperately need them, and are willing to pay resell, we'll and then get buy them off, off the of drop. Here. Does it say what list price? Because I don't even know what it they does. originally. It should say that in the description there. Okay. One thirty yeah. is what the yeah. what the retail original price. Yeah, so that wasn't no. too bad of a hike no. from retail. No. But it is still a valuable shoe, so that's those are cool. Yeah, I, they're pretty fun, man. Yeah, I like and, the colors. The colors are very like fun. You know, they're Lego colors and they're just kind of a fun looking shoe. Yeah. And like that you can buy a new shoe for one eight. I mean, that's like a one thirty was a lower price, I felt like, for what you compare pay for tennis shoes. So Yeah. I'm. I've been. Uh, I just got my first pair of um, Adidas, uh, the ZX series. I really like that actual shoe too. Like I'm a fan of the. It's kind of a classic shoe style that they've brought back more recently. Yeah. Um, you can go back to Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, do you think you you'll wear these on like your next special? Um, maybe. I I don't know. I'll have to if it goes with my my outfit. Yeah. Or I'll or I'll find a different type of sneaker probably for the special. Yeah, I feel like this would be a tough one to to um match it out. I mean, I guess there's a lot of colors. You could just choose one of the colors and just wear. Yeah, I yeah. Don't think it's it'd be like any primary color. But yeah. I would dig. To, I want to look for like because I'm a huge DC fan, like Superman, Batman, and stuff. Mm. So. But those are like other ones I would look. But I also just like funky like. I know they had uh, the uh, the Spider Verse ones. Spider-verse. Oh yeah, that I remember seeing those. Yeah, the they just Morales. look like a Chicago colorway Jordan one, but they've got like some reflective like scales or something. Oh, okay. Because of that, but the I think it was that Into the Spider Verse, the animated Spider Man. Right, movie. but Nick, we've gone over this. That's okay. that's a different. That's Marvel. That's not DC. <laughs> He said That's, he's into the DC world I, I, universe. I took a shot. It's, it's the okay, only though. superhero shoe I remembered. <laughs> I know Converse did a bunch of like Superman, Batman. Oh, did they, they? Okay. Converse oh. throw everything on there. The whatever. coolest other pair of shoes I had before the Lego, I bought a corduroy Converse when I was in London oh, in like that sounds cool. 2002. And I just destroyed them. Mm-hmm. Like, and I can never, I've not been able to find them since but yeah that's that sounds uh, so which which converse are you like a chuck taylor guy i can't remember yeah chuck taylor high top black converse was what i usually wore i had red ones in junior high and kids made fun of me for having red (laughs) shoes and i was like whatever dude i'm gonna be i'm gonna be a a, a comedian someday (laughs) (laughs) so was that kind of your go-to like stage shoe was the converse yeah yeah because those are like just go with everything and they're yeah. pretty classic look. Yeah. Yeah, they're easy to style and classic. Yeah, I I've not been I I personally am not a huge fan of them. Um I've just never gotten in I just never got into them. I was always more of a Vans guy. I like yep. uh because of the Well, skate. you're a skater. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause and I played sk- basketball in the 50s, so that's why Congress <laughs> just worked worked well for me. Right. Right. <laughs> I forgot I'm about 75 that. years old, you guys. So, <laughs> I I also have a, like a really narrow foot because I think Converse don't work for certain people. They're like this is uncomfortable, and uh, I've worn them so long that they've just like deformed my feet probably to, like to be so flat now or whatever. Yeah. But, oh, okay, so you have a narrow foot. See, I have a really wide foot, and maybe that's part of why because I, I that definitely informs a lot of my sneaker wearing choices. It's like yeah. I'll try something on, and it's like this is too narrow. I can't. I can't do it. And then uh, I will. I d- What's up? Yeah, not much. <laughs> I uh, I love your blanket though. Did you uh, did Megan make that for you? Yeah, Megan made this. It's like half all the old school DC characters, and then and then it's like the Superman logo on the back of it. Oh, that's awesome! That's super fun. Superman yep. fun. <laughs> So what happens when you get married, your partner makes you uh, blankets. Blankets. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Just one of the perks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> blankets are nice to have. They're cozy. Is it cold there today? You cold? No, it's warm in the cities now. It was in the high. It's going to get up to the 60s. 
Oh, dang. On, like, Monday. So today was in the high 40s. Yeah, it's about, it's it's pretty nice. It's been here, here's been pretty nice as well, which is cool. It's almost like shorts weather, baby. <laughs> it's getting there. It is, it is feeling like spring. Yeah. But. Get out of that seasonal depression because then <laughs> the daylight savings is coming, so it'll be lighter later. Yeah. I just can't handle when it gets dark at like four o'clock. I'm like, come on, <laughs> like, who designed this? Yeah, I yeah, am yeah. stoked for it. I think outdoor comedy like this spring and summer is going to be super fun. Yeah, have you done a lot of outdoor shows? Uh, I did last summer. I mean, kind of in uh, for trying to alternative safety places for yeah. the pandemic, but like which was funny to get. It's funny to get excited about outdoor comedy because <laughs> before the pandemic, if you're like, yeah, it's an outdoor, you're like, oh, this show is not going <laughs> to probably go well because yeah, it de- depending on wh- how how it is. But it is. It's just pleasant just being able to. Yeah. I think everybody real realizes how special it is to be able to get a group of people together and yeah. You know, have you done so. any with the cars? Yeah, with have like, you done any? Like the drive-in with the car horns? I, I didn't. There was a club here that was going to do a drive-in corner bar here, but then it fell through. They lost a sponsor or something, so they never did the drive-in here. But I've, I heard. I don't know. That would be distracting for me. Have you guys done it? Yeah, we've yeah. been doing – there's a <laughs> weekly open mic in just an empty parking lot in an industrial area. It's kind of a good spot to be murdered. But and there's if- a – yeah, they they do a drive-in open mic where people just park in a horseshoe and they honk, they they tune it to a radio frequency that goes to the mic, and there's speakers too, and then they just honk to laugh. And it's, I don't know, it was weird maybe the first time, but then I kind of got, I got used to it too, where it's like, you can kind of feel the, you can get a sense of how the feedback works. You know, the honks are pretty, still kind of intuitive. Are there other like, if they turn their windshield wiper on, like that's like a real like knee slap, like that's yeah, like yeah, yeah. well, it's drink. it's been dark, so that like, would be. I mean, their high beams. Go I appreciate on. the thought. Sometimes people tough, hit their high beams, but yeah, flicking the lights. That's a thing. That I like personally didn't like it, but I mean, it is it's something. But you didn't. You only went one time though, and it was I've kind of twice, a bad night. And it was, but you only went up the one time. Yeah, I've so only you gone went up one once. time. Not but. letting you off the hook. <laughs> so when, but when people laugh, it's like ha ha ha, and then it goes down. Like mm-hmm. when they honk, like do people honk the appropriate amount of time? Yeah, like of if, if you like, really does it throw your timing off. If you're really killing it in the empty parking lot, like you'll get a honk honk honk, or you'll get a chorus of honks, and they'll 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 hit it a few times. And but if people it's more, are honest, so, so if they didn't laugh, they, there's no honking from yeah, that car. Yeah. Oh, I've bombed in this empty oh, yeah. parking lot. No. You, you can See, sit there and staring just, like, just at honk headlights. After he, after he pauses so they're okay then it is legit it's, yeah no it, it sometimes it just feels like you're you're crossing the street <laughs> you know it's when you're light. supposed to yeah <laughs> david's been doing it a lot too it's a similar reaction to open mics it's just a bunch of comics like, yeah. we're not gonna give you that wow the, the timing part that was the part i was struggling with because you'll sort of pause nothing happens and then you'll start to speak again and then you'll get honks and you're like and then you stop again and then you're like wait what was i saying wait uh it's just you just have to kind of pretend like there's i don't i i almost just found it was easier to just like just kind of go slow and have a good time by myself and just sort of pretend like i'm not performing for anybody or cars or anything yeah i've also noticed that i feel like people have figured out how to be an audience there Hmm. Like, I've noticed, even with myself, like, when I do sit in my car, which mostly it's an open mic, so I just, you know, wear a mask and talk to my friends and don't listen to anybody. But, <laughs> and so I, I can't be annoyed that other people do the same to me. But when I do sit in my car, I've gotten a lot faster on the honk. You know, I'm like, I'll, I'll just rest my thumb on the horn so that, like, as soon as somebody says something funny, I could give them the honk, you know. Cause and I think a lot of people have figured it out because it feels like the more recent <laughs> ones, when you do get a honk, it's more instantaneous. Right, and they don't they don't respond to calling them honkies because that is the hacky thing They've, to say. They have <laughs> been called honkies. Yes, <laughs> everyone says it at least once. <laughs> oh no, I didn't say it. I definitely David, you did. Say it? David, you didn't say it. Yeah. I was like, I'm One gonna say three. it. Every, I, I know everyone said it. Everybody but I'm gonna say says it. it. <laughs> Because you're one for three in this room, Bill. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> it's not that everyone says 
this. You can always tell when it's someone's first time because they say it. Like, okay. I got the I got the one. I got the joke. <laughs> I'm gonna get him. <laughs> I was aware. I thought it had gone full circle where uh, it was it was funny again. <laughs> I was like, ooh, I'm gonna do it ironically, you guys. <laughs> but everyone was like, ooh, no. Yeah, dude, your glasses have clear frames. You're not. You don't have quite enough hipstery look oh. to be ironic. You gotta get. You gotta get much thicker. Yeah, you see, Tommy and I gotta figure it out. Okay. You yeah, wanna I be ironic? Glasses, I got birds on my shirt. Yeah. So. Yeah, Tommy's I can do winning it. that one. <laughs> you could probably get get away with it. Oh man. So, what else have you been doing in the pandemic? Have you have you been doing a lot of Lego sets? Like in in the pandemic, is it? Yeah. Well, my wife and I bought a house, so oh, we were okay. getting the house together, and then I. Uh, I had Legos like packed away, and so I've been putting together sets. Like right now, I'm in the comic book room. I have a comic book room, and then downstairs, I have a Lego building uh, station in the basement. You know, just like everybody at yeah. their house has a comic book room and a Lego building station. Has adults yeah. in their thirties. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so I built uh, I built the Hogwarts castle, the Millennium Falcon. I got a bookstore. I met my wife in a bookstore. That's how we met each other at Barnes and Noble. And so I we got the Lego modular bookstore. So, oh, cool. It's been it's been pretty rad. At we least it wasn't cat. like a a Borders or like one of those that are no longer around. Because then you'd have to explain to people what Borders was. Yeah. Well, I had a bit about like telling our great grandkids like, where did you meet? And like bookstore? Like what is that? And I'm like, they're you just it, it sold paper. And they're like, what is paper? And I'm like, <laughs> ah, never mind. <laughs> Go get in your Tesla. There's <laughs> yeah, another, right. another so, power outage coming. Yeah, let, <laughs> let your Tesla drive you to school. <laughs> oh, man. that's fun. I, I had a, a thing the other day where I was like, man, I wish there was a place where I could just, like, rent books, you know, like a video store, but for books. And I was oh, like, oh, yeah, on. library sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, still, I still read. I don't know. I still read books. I, I have an iPad. I hate reading on it. I'm not not a fan. I'm not good at actually finishing. It. I always end up like switching over to a game, and I'm just like, well, I'm just playing a video game. I'm not reading the book I wanted to read. It's also easier on your eyes to read on paper. Is it? Like, I think it's a lot better for your eyes. Helps you go to sleep. Well, I don't want them to go away. I have like an e-reader. I don't read them on the iPad because it's too bright. But the e-reader has like paper-like oh, okay. qualities, so it's a little easier. But- and then, uh, but I do like to read, like when I, if I have an author, I really like, I always buy the new hardcover and just read it old school or get the audio book. Yeah. Like a lazy person. <laughs> <laughs> so no, t- multitasking person. <laughs> exactly. Well, it is nice though. Cause I can listen to podcasts, listen to a book, and then I can find where I am in the book and read it in bed or whatever. Oh, cool. So Tommy, well, a lot of, be- like with sneakers, a lot of people have, have their grail sneaker, like the, the one that they if money was no object that's the ultimate sneaker that they would want do you have that with legos like do you have one set that like you've always wanted or is like the the someday the dream set uh no i mean when i got the millennium falcon that was kind of the big one okay there's sets that are coming out that i want but i don't know there is like some of the old school 80s i'd like to get the ones i had when i was a kid like like sealed sets i think Mm -hmm. that's what i would spend the money on like the monorail the spaceship stuff just for because it's nostalgic yeah Mm -hmm. but but they re-release stuff so often too so i I just kind of get excited and if there's a cool set i'll grab it and then if you get bored of it then i'll resell it that's cool that you can just exactly like sneakers it's literally they're re-releasing stuff from the 80s which is 100 percent how nike sells sneakers they're just like oh here's another jordan 3 you wanted it in 87 you couldn't have it then but you'll pay 200 bucks for it now. Because <laughs> you're an adult with <laughs> real money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. I uh, I should try to find that one set. I wonder I wonder if I can pull it up for you. What were you going to say, Tommy? Sorry. When you, when you guys buy, like, can you tell if it's getting too hyped? Because, like, a Lego set will come out. Sometimes it'll sell out. Then it's on eBay. But if you just wait or, like, because I'm sure those, even those Lego shoes, if people bought them right away, mm-hmm. now they've kind of averaged out. Does that happen to a lot of shoes? Or is there ones that just keep trekking up no matter what? There's both. Uh, There's definitely yeah. shoes that'll have, like, most shoes, like, right when they drop, like, the day of and for a day or two, 
they're pretty high, and then they kind of fall off when everybody actually gets their pair in the mail. Right. And then from there, they kind of usually stabilize and maybe start a hike up. There's also pairs that, like, will sit at a low price and then something happens. Like, another shoe is released with the same... Like, Travis Scott, for example, the, the rapper. He had a couple shoes come out, an Air Force One and a Jordan yeah. 4. And they kind of sat around, like, three to $400 for a couple of years. And then he released a Jordan 1 and a Jordan 1 Low and a Jordan 6 like he and a Dunk. Like, he released a bunch of shoes that went crazy with the hype and are up at, like, 1000 And it bumped his old shoes up to, like, 800 to 1000 too. So wow. there are shoes like that that, like, aren't worth a crazy amount. And then all of a sudden something happens and they get... yeah. And then there's skyrocketed up. I think the main difference though between Lego sets and 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 sneakers would be that with sneakers, like once you wear them and you crease the toe, the big thing is like creasing the toe right here. Yeah. If the toe's creased, the value of them goes down significantly. And so then, uh, there. So there's this thing, this term dead stock, which would be like an original packaging Lego set versus one that's already been put together. So. If, if they're going, if they're really, really, I mean, like, you could probably, like, what would the Air Mags go for creased? Oh, the Nike Mags. If yeah. they've actually been worn, yeah. probably still, I don't know, what do those go for regular? I, Let's just ballpark you, 10, Do you know 000. the Air Mags? Are you familiar with those? They're the, the Back to the Future shoe from Back to the Future 2. That They're like a big that? crazy looking boot that laces Yeah, the itself. ones that are self- Yeah, like, yeah. So they they made those, and I think they sell for around ten grand. They made no. them for real. Yeah, yeah. They ten resell. grand now though. Yeah. yeah, no, it's outrageous. It might even be more they, than that. They light up. David, can you look up the Air Mags on uh, StockX? Are they gonna re-release them though, so we can all have them? Uh, I thought they would do a more of a generic version. They've done some auto lacing shoes that aren't those, but I doubt How many? that they do much with the mags just because people who have them have this like how super many did they make shoe. i don't think they made that many yeah. probably a, maybe a thousand or something <laughs> air magma no uh, just type maybe nike mag that's yeah, funny that they're not coming up air mag scroll nike down mag back to the future 2016 yeah those oh wow no. maybe try the 2011 Sixty-five thousand dollars. there were two different there were two different it's like a mercedes times that they released them <laughs> yeah try that one there we go okay yeah just fifteen thousand <laughs> reasonable that's like the camry <laughs> i mean after 60 15 looks like a deal so that's crazy. Why was the, I wonder why the what was that other date? 2016 they released. I think a that was just a super super limited release. Like it was, it I, was a super weird. small number made, and I think it was maybe more so authentic to the movie. Yeah. So there was that the date that they go to in the movie is when they released these. Oh, gotcha. And, oh, and I thought it was 2015. I'm pretty sure that I remember that that was a thing is they were they did this release. Let's see. 2016, I guess I'm maybe I'm wrong, but I know that they maybe they just made them. They didn't actually like they made the sneaker right. like one of them and Side then they nine. released some. I know that yeah, I remember they released a few, but it was like it, it didn't really work. It kind of worked, but didn't didn't really really work. And then uh and then they actually kind of perfected the technology a little bit more and then had a little bit more general release but i know that they were like super limited and these also just like got outside of the sneaker culture as well so yeah. this kind of was like also pop culture so there was like the sneaker heads are going for it and then the pop culture thing and i think the stock numbers were like crazy low yeah they they made a very small number like a thousand or less like real small number and of those of these ones i think it was like maybe a hundred or less like super low yeah 
Oh, yeah. these might have even been a friends and family oh, type so. of weird backdoor deal thing. Like you, you only got them if you're a certain kind of person or whatever. If you just like, like you the knew the right people. Yeah, just an influencer. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how that that pair worked, but there there all was right. a more general release, which is the 2011. But there's three of us, so if we all go in on the 15 grant, that's <laughs> yeah. five a piece. Five and we five can... G's a piece. We could. You just divide them up, and then Each Bjorn, half. don't crease the toe. I know yeah. you're gonna want to. <laughs> I know you're gonna want to. But you can't. <laughs> we could each have sixty six percent of a shoe. So it's like a. There's gonna be kids in the future that have that as an asset, like that they inherit. They're like, well, I want Grandpa's Air Max. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh so. for sure. No, that's something that I see on Reddit every now and then. Somebody's like, my dad just had a pair of Jordan Ones that he bought in 1985 in the shed, and it's like a pristine pair of Chicago colorway ones. And it's like, oh, nice job, you found 20 grand <laughs> or 15 or whatever those are worth. Ooh. Just some outrageous amount of money these shoes are worth that his dad was just like, yeah, some basketball shoes from the 80s. You know, they're my like next to a, a rake. <laughs> <laughs> my collection is just going to be a burden on my family. All my comics and Legos will be like, ah, just throw it out. Just throw it out. That was uh, weird. I don't think. I mean, the way you're talking about the Legos, it sounds like they're in the same vein as yeah. These. There's like just a lot though. They got to go through. Asset. Asset. They have. To, they'll just liquidate them all and <laughs> like sell them at a garage sale, and someone's going to be like, oh my god, a Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I feel like, yeah, I feel like those are – that. the cool part about those is that you could just sort of like – you could put them together, keep them, and then if you maybe didn't want to keep them, you could just get rid of them. Uh, yeah. David and I last night started putting together a Cyclone roller coaster all – it's not Lego brand. It's like – what is it, CDX or some yeah. some weird – off brand, but it's compatible with Lego. Yeah. It's – pretty cool it's it's like a wooden roller coaster oh that's red uh thing how many pieces was it a lot how many was it uh, i think it's like one i don't know if it's like a thousand but it's it's like four feet long by like a foot high or a foot wide yeah that's awesome so i put the chain together <laughs> that's the la chain that you use to bring the cart up on the thing oh man that probably took forever it, it took it was... me the series finale of wandavision <laughs> it's like i finished it like right as we were done with the episode i was like wow that was the exact amount of time that i needed for this including the 15 minutes of credits or i just fast the... forwarded to the to the thing <laughs> <laughs> i cheated a little bit just a little bit so, Tommy, what's uh, in the Lego community? Do you guys have a term for yourselves that's, like, equivalent to sneakerhead? Well, we're, we're sneaker it's, head. there's adult fans of Lego, so uh -huh. A-Files is what they're, whatever. Yeah, adult, adult fan Adult fan of, of Lego. Legos. A-Fall. Yeah. Okay. A-Fall. So, do the A-Falls, when they hear about things like this, uh, this, this uh, what, roller coaster set that's not made by Lego, but it's compatible with that, do you guys look down your nose at that the way we do at fake sneakers? Um, I've never gotten like generic Lego or uh, off brand Lego, mm -hmm. but mega blocks. There's, like, or th then there's just, like brickheads that like all kind of building stuff. So I've like watched videos, or they'll do like videos of just like, hey, we're gonna order this weird set from China, and like it, that's like a knockoff of like a big like Iron Man set mm -hmm. that would normally be like a thousand, and then they're like, Th this one's too. So those are kind of fun because they'll be like, well, this was missing seven pieces, and this doesn't work. <laughs> like so. It, it sounds like yeah. there's less animosity. You guys are much more civilized folks. Sneakerheads are real. We get real grumpy about fake sneakers. <laughs> Why? Well, I can imagine. Cause that, but that's like, that's like people trying to trick people. Like, I mean, I guess they're trying True. to maybe do it in Lego, like scan, but it's not. You know, it's a Lego brand. Like, it would be harder to do. You can't make like a fake. Okay, so they're not actually faking the Lego sets. Yeah. The people that are like getting kind of tricked are like moms on Facebook that are like, oh, my kid wanted the Death Star. This is only, and then she's might be ordering the <laughs> weird Chinese brand or whatever, you know, yeah, overseas brand. But. Well, because I found this set for David of the roller coaster, and I looked for a Lego branded. There is, there's like two Lego branded roller coasters, but they were really tiny and lame and really expensive. <laughs> And I wanted the like, the, I mean, this thing is massive, and it actually yeah. runs. Well, Lego does have like the big roller coaster. Oh, they that do. That's retiring. There's like a giant Lego Ferris wheel and a giant 
like a roller coaster. Okay. But, uh, Cause I started uh, with looking at connects. Do you remember connects? Did you ever? Oh yeah. <laughs> I never did it, but yeah, I know I what you're those. talking about. They were like, like a little the stick different. That stuck into the little like. Yeah. Things. There's yeah. like the little fans, and then they like clicked in. With that the was sticks. real specific. I really painted a picture there for the. Oh audience. yeah, yeah, yeah. The stick yeah. that stuck into the thing. Classic. Yeah. Because I know yeah. that. I remember a friend had the roller coaster of the Kinex roller coaster. Um, and I was just looking for it because David, our friend, is a huge roller coaster fan. Uh, and so we wanted to get him uh, something to commemorate his roller coaster fandom nice. <laughs> for his birthday. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, we're kind of closing in on on the time here on yeah. the episode. So. If somebody, if if one of the the brickheads, if if one of the brickheads hears this episode, and he's he's not an honest brickhead, and he hears about your collection, and he breaks into your house, and he's he's snooping around, and he, he can't right he, he past, actually right can't past. find the door to the basement, <laughs> but he somehow finds these shoes, and he's like these are Lego adjacent, and he takes them, and insurance is covering the one sixty. Are you gonna replace these? Or are you gonna? gonna pick a different pair of shoes i would replace these i definitely want these in my life no <laughs> matter right. what well now that i saw that they're staying sticking average i was like maybe i'll buy a second pair too that i can so then i can wear these a little harder one often. to stock and one to rock yeah you really are turning into a sneakerhead <laughs> more of a sneakerhead than us neither of us have one to stock and one to rock yeah we don't do that it's like i buy i buy them to I'll like just trash just to a wear. bunch of shoes and then i'm like i wish these were clean <laughs> The yeah. simple solution to my problem here, but is well, that's like is. my dad. He's a hiker, and he REI made this shoe that he loves, and then all of a sudden he found out they're not gonna make them, so he just bought a bizarre amount of hiking shoes because it's just like, and, it, and he was like, I think they should last me till I was like, don't say it, I don't want it to hear you have <laughs> enough shoes till you die. <laughs> like that's weird. My dad literally did the same thing though. My dad's got like a big <laughs> wide foot, and so there's not that many boots that fit him, and he's I'm from Montana. And he's big into hiking and hunting and stuff. So he'd find one boot that actually worked. He'd just buy like four pairs and just always have those. Because yeah. they would just, no, a... he'd been burned by the same thing your dad did. He's like, yeah. he finally found one that works and then they discontinued it. So he's like, oh, it's a pretty standard dad happen. move. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. This is easy. It's what I like. If New Balance <laughs> like, stops right. making this style, I'm going to be <laughs> mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, Tommy, do you have anything you want to plug, any shows or any anything? This will probably come out in like a week. Uh, just my website, man. Uh, kind of touring's up in the air. Some stuff's coming, but Uh Listen to my uh, album on satellite radio or Pandora or Spotify. Having the time of my life. Check it out. Awesome. All right, you want to Thanks for out? having no, me. Go ahead. All right, so thank you, everybody, for watching make sure and follow us on instagram like and subscribe on youtube follow our podcast on apple Podcasts. anywhere you get your podcast we have new episodes every wednesday thank you so much tommy for being on the show of course pleasure <laughs> super fun all right <laughs>